Hello everybody, hope you're having a good weekend. We're going to finish off this chapter by talking about the physics of musical instruments. I like music. Too bad I don't play an instrument, but I am learning to play the guitar. So musical instruments rely on standing waves within a string or an air column. String instruments, you know, like pianos, guitars, violins, and such. And then air columns, uh, flutes, saxophones, yada, yada, yada. Three basic types, strings, closed pipes, and open pipes. And we'll talk about strings today. We'll do pipes in the next one, because this PowerPoint's going to be a long one. So different instruments have different waveforms. And here's a picture of some of those waveforms. And here's the instruments that go along with them. For part A, we have a glockenspiel. For waveform B, we have a soft piano. And for C, we have a loud piano. And for D, a trumpet. Our ears can actually pick up the shapes of these different waveforms. It sees all that little static. See all these little bumps in here. Our ears can actually pick that up. That's how we distinguish between musical instruments. And some people are better than that than others. Like really gifted musicians can really pick that stuff out. Here's a couple more waveforms for you. For E, we got a French horn. For F, we have a clarinet. And for G, a violin. Good luck getting that tune out of your head for the rest of the weekend. All right, when we're talking about musical instruments, there's something we're going to introduce called standing waves. If a wave, if reflected waves have the same amplitude, frequency, and velocity of the original waves, standing waves are formed. They do not move through a medium, but vibrate in loops. And I actually have a pretty cool little thingy I'll show you guys on Monday. The standing wave generator. And standing waves have different uh, parts. There's the node, the point of no vibration. It just stays in the same spot all the time. And the anti-node, the point of maximum vibration. It's going to be like a crest or a trough. It's actually going to be both, as we'll see. And for some reason, the picture on here didn't come out. But I got a better picture for the next one. The simplest standing wave for any instrument is called its fundamental frequency. And when we're doing fundamental frequencies, the uh, weird little Greek symbol stands for lambda still, and is still a symbol for wavelength. Strings. Uh, their standing waves have a half lambda. Pipes have a quarter lambda. We'll get into this in more detail. I'll show you why it's half and why it's a quarter. As the frequency increases, harmonics are created. The harmonic of a wave is a component frequency of the single signal. Notes are changed by changing the length of tube or string. So like when you put your fingers on guitar fret, you're actually changing the length of a string that's vibrating. When you're putting the your fingers over the holes on a flute, you're changing the length of a pipe. So we're going to consider waves and strings first. So consider the two waves in a plucked guitar string. One's going to be reflected, and one's the transmitted one. You can see as they move, one's going left, one's going right. So the blue wave is traveling leftward, and the green wave is traveling rightward. Both waves are reflected from their fixed endpoints, which I didn't show on here because it would be huge, and interfere with each other. 
And if we look at the sum of the waves at different instances, we have this red wave as shown below. Remember the superposition, drawing two waves on top of each other. They both have the same amplitude, so they're going to, the red wave, the resultant, is going to have double the amplitude. And it's going to have the same wavelength, here to here wavelength. And as it's moving, you can see how the red wave changes. So just pay attention to the red wave on here. And you can see the point where the red wave crosses the dash line never changes. It's always going to be in the same spot. The only thing it's changing are the frequent, or sorry, the amplitudes of its uh, crests and troughs, which just go up and down. Yeah, one more time. Exciting, I know. So for your information, the guitar string actually looks like the red wave because of the principle of superposition, which we all know and love because we love drawing the superposition of waves. And as I said before, some portion of the string called the nodes do not move from their equilibrium position. So the red wave, it's always crossing the dash line at the same spot. That never changes. So that's its node. Node, 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 node. And know that the other portions of the string, called the antinodes, go undergo maximum motion. That's why it starts up here, and it goes all the way down, and it goes back up. So it just changes its amplitude from max on either side of these. Antinode, 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 antinode. So we call a wave with nodes and antinodes a standing wave. The red wave stands in place and is the sum of the two identical traveling waves with wave velocities in opposite directions. So we only get standing waves when two waves are interfering with each other, one going to the left, one going to the right, and it can produce a wave that that superposition of its wave doesn't move. So of course the lobes of the antinodes keep reversing positive to negative. It happens really fast in a guitar strings and other kind of strings. You go from crest the trough, trough to crest, like really fast. And it actually looks pretty cool. Like you'll have, imagine if we could uh, just draw another wave that looks like this right on top of it. I guess what a standing wave will look like, which I just did. So your standing wave, since it moves so fast, this is what it actually looks like, the red in this picture. So if the energy of the right frequency is added to the vibrating string, the amplitude of the antinodes will increase. And this is called resonance. So we keep adding energy is going to cause resonance. So consider a tight guitar string anchored firmly at both ends. Looks something like this. Since the string is fixed at its ends, the ends cannot move up and down. So it's the fixed end boundary condition at both sides. However, the other points on the string can. If they couldn't, then we wouldn't have all the beautiful music that we hear today. You can pluck it up. You can pluck it down. It's going to move up and down. And it's also, you can create a standing wave that looks like this. Node, node, and your anti-nodes here. So if the distance between the ends is L, we'll call it the length, from here to here is L. We see that the wavelength lambda of this particular vibration is 2L because remember wavelength is the distance between two of the same points of a wave. Since we only can get one crest here, that means the other crest is going to have to be like way over here off, to this, off the screen. So this is only a half of the wavelength. So the total wavelength is two times this entire distance, hence 2L. So recall that velocity equals lambda f, where v is the wave velocity, how fast the wave crest travels through the string, and f is the linear frequency. We all remember that. So now we have frequency equals v over lambda f, rearranging that equation, or frequency equals v over 2L for this string here. So we call the lowest natural frequency of a vibrating system its fundamental frequency. So this is the lowest vibrating frequency. It's the lowest you can go. So therefore, it's fundamental. So if a string 
that's fixed at both ends, the fundamental frequency of that stretch string is F equals V over 2L. The next natural wavelength is illustrated below. Again, fixed at both sides. Crest trough, crest trough, antinode, antinode, node, node. It's going to come back the other way, and you're going to produce a standing wave that looks like this. So the wavelength here of this particular vibration is L. So we could start here, and it's going to come back to the same position here. So the entire wavelength is L here. So now we have another natural wavelength. It looks something like this. With a standing wave, it looks like this. The wavelength of this particular vibration is 2L over 3. Because we have one full wavelength from this point here to this point here, plus another half of a wavelength. So, and that it will equal two thirds. Do the math. And if we are clever, we can deduce a pattern for the natural wavelengths of the string, which I will help you with. So lambda 1, the first fundamental frequency, equals 2L over 1. Lambda 2 equals 2 over 2L. Lambda 3 equals 2 over 3L. Do we see a pattern here yet? 1, 2, 3. So we can just use this little subscript N, and this N will stand for whichever fundamental frequency we're looking for. So if we want to find the fifth frequency, the fifth wavelength, we just do 2 divided by 5 times L, and that gives us our lambda. So this formula actually here gives us the nth natural wavelength. We can find any natural wavelength using this formula. You can find the millionth wavelength, which will be pretty small. So we call the points that remain at the equal position nodes. We already knew this. Node, 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 node. They're everywhere. All these red dots are nodes. We call the points that have maximum displacement antinodes. Antinode, antinode. Antinode, antinode. Antinode, antinode. And three more here for you. We call the set of natural wavelengths or frequencies the harmonics. So this is the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, and so forth. See, it has one standing wave. We see. So that's the first harmonic. Two sets of antinode nodes. Sorry, two sets of crest troughs, you know, two sets of antinodes. That'll be our second, third, and so on. The first harmonic is also known as the fundamental. So this first harmonic is the fundamental. It's the very basic one. So an excellent example of resonance is a classic Tacoma Narrow suspension bridge constructed 57 years after the Brooklyn Bridge in Tacoma, Washington. Situated on the Tacoma Narrows in Puget Sound near the city of Tacoma, Washington, the bridge had only been open for traffic for a few months. Then it hits some wind, and wind on a suspension bridge is going to make the bridge start to vibrate. And this vibration can be bad, because this happens. And on November 7th, 1940, at approximately 11 o'clock a.m., the first Tacoma Narrow suspension bridge collapsed due to wind-induced vibrations. Um, this is the same like phenomenon that I'm sure you guys have seen of like opera singers singing at a really high pitch, and then it shatters a glass because their voices hit the fundamental frequency. So this wind produced the fundamental frequency of the bridge because everything has a fundamental frequency. And when this happened, the bridge crapped out. A little more for you. We know this formula already, and now we know this formula for the nth or the nth wavelength. We can put the two together after we do some rearranging, and we can find the nth frequency is n v over two l. So the harmonics of a stretch string n can be either one, two, three, any whole number. 
Furthermore, it can be shown that the wave velocity of a stretch string depends on two things. The tension, which we're going to call F because it's a force in the string, and the mass per unit length, which we call mu of the string. Thus, velocity equals the force divided by mu, and it'll be the square root of that. So we can find the wave velocity another way if we know the tension in it and we know the density of the string per length. So in terms of the properties of a string then, we have the natural frequency n over 2L times that guy is square root. And we can find the harmonics of a stretch string using this formula too. Because all we're doing here is replacing the V here with whatever V equals here. So we can find our Fn two different ways. So here's a quick little problem, and that'll be the end for today. So suppose a guitar string has a length of 1.25 meters before insulation and a weight of 15 grams. What is the mass per unit length of the string? So mass per unit length, we divide mass by length. So 15 grams divided by 1.25 meters. But as always, we should convert grams to the SI unit of kilograms. Meters are already SI, so we can leave them. So 15 grams will equal 0 0.015 kilograms, and we leave our L like that. So we divide mass by length, and we get that, and we get an answer of 0 0.012 kilograms per meter. So now we know what mu is. So if the tension of the string is 2,500 newtons, what is the wave velocity of the string? So velocity, the square root of the tension divided by mu. So the square root of 2,500 divided by 0 0.012, and you get 456 meters per second. Pretty fast. So what are the first two harmonic frequencies of the string if its ends are separated by 0.75 meters? So we have a formula for the harmonic frequencies. We're looking for F1. So F sub 1, everywhere there's an N in the right side of the equation, we put a 1 in. And our velocity, we found the last step and our L is given to us as 0.75 meters, so the length of the fretboard there is 0.75 meters. So 456 divided by 2 times 0.75, and you get a frequency of 304 hertz. We're going to do the same thing for the second harmonic. We're going to put a 2 in wherever there is an N, and you're going to get 608 hertz. If you put a 3 in there, I bet you it's going to be 912 hertz. So that is it for today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Sorry that was too long. See you on Monday.